what people were trying to tell me in the early 2000s when they said, you need to go bankrupt a couple of times before we're going to talk to you or do business or lend you money. I was like, you guys are crazy. I don't need to do that, but I did. And, and it, it helped me understand deeply who I am and why I'm here. And, and I, my, my best, uh, my best guess on that right now is I'm here to teach from experience and help people become financially free, breaking their bondage. And that's, that's what, that, that's what popped the EQRP, the company and that whole, the, the whole space of helping people understand how they can use their retirement money. Be, and, and that really came from a conversation with my dad right before he died 10 years ago, where he was, he, he just told me point blank, man, I had so many things that I wanted to do. And then the piece that I, I heard in my brain, he didn't say, but it was there was, I just didn't have the money. I didn't have the resources. So I never really had the freedom to do it. And that, that hurt and it hit me hard. And it made me think I got to do something about this. And that's what EQRP is all about. It's about giving people choices and, and power over their future where they can design a, a future versus having a default one that, that where they, they're just kind of tiptoeing safely to death's door. And then they end up there meeting the person that they really could have been living in regret. And, and that's, that's how it was born. You're listening to the Real Estate Runway podcast powered by Quattro Capital where we're all about alternative business and investment strategies to help you amplify life and maximize wealth. Here's your host, Chad, the investment maverick. All right, all right, all right. Real Estate Runway family, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Runway podcast. I'm your host, your fearless leader, Chad Sutton with Quattro Capital. We're going to get into a super exciting episode today with the one, the only Damian Lupo, founder of EQRP and currently chief investment officer for FrameTech. We're going to get into all that, put it all together. Before we do, if you get any value out of this or anything Team Quattro puts out for you, like it, subscribe it, share it, pay it forward. We don't do this for a profit. We do this to share information with people like you who want to hear it. So pay it forward, friends. And now without further ado, Damien, welcome to the show, brother. How are you? Good, Chad. It's good to be here, man. I'm excited about this. Yeah, it's good to have you on. And, and I, get to, I get to do this corny thing. I'm going to hold up this book and we'll see if it shows up for you on video. For those on audio, I am holding up a 2019 edition vintage copy of the QRB, uh, QRP book written by none other than Damien S. Lupo himself. So I feel honored to have you on the show. Good, it's like a celebrity here, brother. <laughs> With your vintage book. <laughs> My vintage book, right? A whole five years ago. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I know you've made you've written several versions since then. But before we get into what uh, QRP is and frame tech and all that kind of stuff, give me a little bit of a walk of history. You know, how did you get into this space and decide that this product needed to be in existence? Now, what was kind of the story there? And I know you go through it in the book in great detail. So folks pick up a copy of this. But what do you think? Well, it, it's interesting because 25 years ago, I was, I, I was, I was going to say messing around, but I was, I, I took real estate real seriously and went in and, yeah. and got rid of an insurance agency, started buying houses, and ended up doing a bunch of houses and and did some other projects. Did I, mean, I did 150 houses, bought those, and 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 then developed some other real estate stuff, and got caught in 2008 with seven projects that all went upside down in 12 months. So I went from 20 million to negative five million in 12 months. It was a brutal year for a lot of people, and I, you know, I was left homeless without really anything, and had to start over. And it was a, you know, it was, it was interesting becoming wealthy and thinking that I was ten feet tall and bulletproof. And then 2008 happened all over my face, and I went, oh, okay, I'm not that smart. I'm not that good. I was very lucky with timing. I, I ground, I, like mm. I did a lot of grinding, but I, I needed the experience to be humbled and. And really to understand why I was going to do whatever I was going to do in life, because at the time I was just doing it for more. I was grinding and making more millions to have more millions. And it wasn't really any meaningful purpose or impact. And, and so on the other side of that, what led to EQRP and now frame tech and all these other things, I had to ask a different question. Like what, what is, what is really true? Like who the heck am I? And, and I think that that's what people were trying to tell me in the early 2000s when they said, you need to go bankrupt a couple of times before we're going to talk to you or do business or lend you money. I was like, you guys are crazy. I don't need to do that, but I did. And, and it, it helped me understand deeply who I am and why I'm here. And, and I, my, my, best, uh, my best guess on that right now is I'm here to teach from experience and help people become financially free, breaking their bondage. And that's, that's, what, that, that's what popped the EQRP, the company and that whole the, the whole space of helping people understand how they can use their retirement money. 
be, and, and that really came from a conversation with my dad right before he died 10 years ago, where he was, he, he just told me he's point blank, man, I had so many things that I wanted to do. And then the piece that I, I heard in my brain, he didn't say, but it was there was, I just didn't have the money. I didn't have the resources. So I never really had the freedom to do it. And that, that hurt and it hit me hard and it made me think I got to do something about this. And that's what EQRP is all about. It's about giving people choices and, and power over their future where they can design a, a future versus having a default one that, that where they, they're just kind of tiptoeing safely to death's door. And then they end up there meeting the person that they really could have been living in regret. And, and that's, that's how it was born. That, that is a powerful statement, kind of sends chills down my spine a little bit, thinking about what, you know, when, when, you, when you get to the end of your life, you're going to look back and think about what, what could you have been. And I hope you're satisfied with that answer, right, when you get there. Um, before we get into a little more about this QRP stuff, I got to ask, I mean, every time I'm fortunate enough to have someone who will just say, had 2008 happen all over your face, to use your words, g give me a lesson or two or a learning, because it, it, was, it was a different experience for everyone. And I ask this question most importantly now, not because I believe we're in 2008 again, but I believe, you know, it, it's a cycle and we've been on a great run for 10 or 12 years and, and whatever it is, is going on. So what learnings can you pass on to the audience, uh, just as a segue from, you know, what ultimately led to, um, your downfall in 2008? One of the biggest lessons is always have people that are bald or gray or around you that you will actually listen to. I've, I've wa I'm watching some of this happen with people that I work with closely now where they have decided that they can smoke their own exhaust and, mm -hmm. and they're just, they're, they're happy to be right and righteous. And, and it's unfortunate because when I was in that space in 2007, I, I thought I, I know everything. And mm -hmm. even if I didn't say that, I was really thinking and I was acting that way. And I stopped, I stopped having those older, grayer balder, wiser people around, like having people that have been around an extra two or three or four cycles that literally just give you perspective. I just, I don't care if you're 20 or 40 or 60, there's always perspective to be gained from somebody that's, that's been through another generation worth of stuff. Because like Mark Twain said, things aren't the same, but they sure do rhyme. And, and people that have gone through it have wisdom, they like in their cells and their DNA, they can, they can say in the same, same way I can from people that are, that are doing deals, real estate or investing today or starting businesses. I mean, I've started 70 plus businesses. I kind of, I know a couple things about it. And when somebody says, here's what I'm going to do, I have instinctual wisdom that I can share because I've been through it. It's not something I read in a book. It's like, look, the 14 times I've experienced what you're about to do, here's, here's my perspective. And I, when you stop having those people around you, you're just, your brain will make up whatever your, your ego needs it to make up, to make sense. Mm, and that's and a powerful you stop statement. Rolling, it, 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 the ego is <laughs> great and it is dangerous. And um, I think that that's, that's one of the greatest lessons. You, if you don't have that, those people around you, you're going to become your own mentor. And even though Tony Robbins says you are your own guru, I think we also can delude ourselves. And that's, that's what a lot of people did. And they, they, they thought, Hey, we're all 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And, and, and this, this cycle is going to keep going up. And I see a lot of people going through that right now thinking, oh, everything's going to be fine. It's different. I mean, things change and, and having wisdom from experience around you that you'll actually listen to is huge. Yeah. And that, that's great. Just, I guess to sum that up, you're really saying there's some things you didn't know, you know, when you were setting up your empire before, and maybe had you had in your life or listened to some of those older, balder, wiser people you know, perhaps you would have set a few things up differently and maybe been more weatherproof for the storm that came through, right? I, I think that that's a huge part of, of what people miss. They, they also think that they should always be going all in. And, and instead of saying, <laughs> okay, there are cycles and it does, it does storm. It, and instead of saying, I'm always going to go black or always going to go red or just like, hey, you know what? The house is going to nail you. And that, and that was one of the things I thought, I, what, like it's all, I want to have all my money at work. And yeah. having some part of your balance sheet being lazy, meaning you've got some stuff on the side that isn't all at risk all the time. I don't care how old you are. That's always smart. There's, it's never a good reason to say I'm going to be all in. And if I make one mistake, I'm going to be homeless. That is not a very stable place to, to act from. So I, I learned the lesson. So I'm not doing that particular thing again, regardless of what Elon Musk did after he sold PayPal and <laughs> went all in times five and you know became a trillionaire. But I, I think for most people, it's, it's a relatively smart thing to have something on the sidelines at all times. Yeah, that make that makes perfect sense. And so let, let's kind of take that forward a little bit and talk about this this need you discovered. And, and folks, if you are at all 
you know, in the retirement account system. You've got a 401k with a current or prior employer. You've, you've got a Roth IRA or something of that sort. Anywhere that you have what we'll call qualified money, this episode is for you because th this is this is exactly what Damien is, is focused on. And his product that we're about to talk about is, you know, a, a different spin on a very specific type of, of self-directed retirement account that gives you a lot of freedom. So let, let's kind of get into the solution you built, what it is, why you built it, and, and why it matters to these individuals. Well, what, back in the early 2000s or to, after 20, 2008, I started looking at what was out there and just trying mm -hmm. to make sense of, of the world and, and also starting to notice people were doing some things with their, their retirement accounts. And I thought, hmm, they're doing some things that are different. They're not necessarily just buying mutual funds. And, and I had a, a guy come to me and he said, Hey, I want to use some of my retirement account to go buy some silver. And I was selling some, I was selling gold and silver with one of my companies back then. And, and I said, sure. And then I realized, wait a second, I bet you he's not the only one that would like to use their retirement account. Yeah. There's probably other people that would buy some more gold and silver from me. So I, I said, I need to learn about this thing. And the more I learned about it, the more I realized that this is basically, it's hidden in plain sight, this option that the tax code gives everybody to have retirement account. And, and a qualified plan just means something that has tax-friendly uh, tax advantages to it. And, and I was like, well, hmm, there's a lot of people, like millions of people that have IRAs and 401ks that are trapped in Wall Street. And hmm. a lot of the people that have those don't want to be trapped in Wall Street. They just didn't realize there's another option. And then I realized, well, you know, some people have these self-directed IRAs at Schwab or Fidelity, and they still don't really have options other than they can pick what stock they want. And, and so I said, well, there's got to be something that I can do to give people power and control and then educate them. And, and so the idea was that I wanted to build something that wasn't out there. And so we did, uh, built the, the EQRP and, and that was, it's a tool, it's an enhanced qualified retirement plan that gives pretty much anybody that has a social security number, the ability to control their retirement money and direct it however they want into all the cool stuff out there, not just, you know, whatever Wall Street wants to sell you and make fees from but like the real estate projects that are out there, people that are doing apartments, people are buying Bitcoin with it and, and physical gold and like all these cool things and people, things that people are interested in versus like, it's amazing how many people go, I, you know, I have retirement money, but I don't know how much. And they have 14 accounts. There's a half a million dollars. It's all over the place. They have no idea what it's in. And their entire strategy is, I hope this is worth a lot when I retire. And it's like, eesh. so this was meant to give people the tool and then build a community of like-minded people around them. So now there's thousands of people in this community that literally are engaged with each other online in this closed community where they can talk because, you, you know, it, when, you, when you take control of your money, in general, you're kind of an alien. Like most people aren't going to do it. You talk to your friends, your family, and they're like, you're crazy. And what you realize is that there's a lot of people out there. And what we've done is brought those people together so that they can grow together. They can do deals together. They, they just, they, they don't feel like they're on an Island, which is really helpful. Like, I think we're, we're being broken apart and everything's so decisive. We're actually doing the opposite. We're bringing people together. Yeah, that's pretty great, Damien. And, and folks, just to think about it, I mean, most of you, if, you, if you've had any career at all whatsoever, you've probably got some retirement money somewhere. Somewhere you had a company that would either match your contribution or you know they had some kind of a qualified retirement plan that you put money into. And I think Damien kind of, he, he took this statement for granted, but he hit it on the head that I'm sure many of you, if not now, at some point in your life have looked at whatever Northwestern Mutual or Fidelity or Charles Schwab or any other, you know, massive wealth management firm out there who's probably behind these plans. You've looked at that prospectus they sent you and they said, oh yeah, we believe you need to be in this mix of this stuff and this mix of that stuff. And then we'll taper that as you get older. And you're like, oh, sounds great. I have no idea what you just said. And you still, to this day, don't understand what you're invested in, right? The, the hard reality of that is a lot of these major indexes are now comprised of the same five or six companies on the stock exchange. And so you think you're diversified, you know, and you may, if you're between stocks and bonds, sure, that's diversification between traded assets, but you think you're diversified being in the S&P 500 or, or, you know, X, X, Y, Z index, and you're really not, you know? And so the challenge is, as Damien mentioned, the plans that come with your corporate gig is usually going to be allowing a, a pre-vetted set of options that are highly regulated, highly feed. And it is what 
the company can benefit the most from. It is usually not what is best for you. And so enter what we've been talking about on this show and, and, and what Damien's group talks about all the time, the concept of alternative investments. It doesn't mean it's an alternative to things you want to understand. It just means it's an alternative to mainstream Wall Street and things there. Somewhere, somewhere where you can actually... I don't know, reach out and touch and feel the thing your money's invested in or pick up the phone and talk to the CEO of the company and, 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 you know, things of that sort that just aren't possible today. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of putting words in your mouth here, Damien, but that's how I see these, these as being so valuable. And so what does it look like to, you know, say, okay, well, maybe I'm one of those people and I've got you know, half a million bucks in four different accounts from prior employers, maybe one's in a current employer, you know, what does it look like to set one of these up? Well, I mean, so there's this process of, of kind of vetting. Um, it's even though anybody in, in America can have one, not everybody mm. should have one. And ah. the reality is it's, it's really only meant if you're, if you're responsible and you want to take an interest, we have sometimes people come up and they say, well, it's not doing anything, you know, like my EQRP is not doing anything. And, I was, and my answer is, well, what are you doing with it? And, and so it's, it's meant for people to say, okay, I want to control, I want to do things, I want to drive it, because I'm going to care about my money more than anybody else, including Wall Street, they just care about their fees, they don't care whether you get right. rich or poor, it's not going to impact them. Um, so what it looks like is somebody says, okay, I'm, I'm that person. And we, we, we figure out if we agree. And if we do, then we, we set up an account and ultimately we get to consolidate everything. So we get to bring all the money together and then put it in your hands. So you have the ability with your checkbook and you can't even do this legally with an IRA anymore because the courts have banned it. And so this is, I mean, this is interesting. It used to be, you could do it with an IRA, you could do it with, um, or you could do it with an EQRP, but now you, you can do it with an EQRP or it's funny, Chad, there's, there are people out there that are actually promoting checkbook IRAs. And I look at their websites and some of these are like institutions and they're they're literally violating federal law because the courts have viol have have found that this is not something that they're going to allow to be legal. So ultimately, it gives you the control, and then you get to go invest in real things, real people, like like you know the project that we're working on in Arizona, where we had a hundred people come out of our investors. A lot of those people used their retirement accounts. They got to go stand in the manufacturing space, meet with the CEOs, meet other investors in this deal. Like it was about as real as it gets. And you're never, ever, ever going to get that with some S&P or some bond or like you're never going to meet the person that's managing it. You're just hoping that it doesn't disappear. And, and so it's a completely different experience. It's, it's really, uh, it's, there's a visceral experience. You're connecting with real people, real things. And, and, I, and, and for, for a lot of people, that is exactly what this has been missing. And it completely changes everything. You're not, you're not wondering, I hope this doesn't become Bernie Madoff, you know, with the next financial scam that's out there and all my money's tied up in some fund. And so like, I, I think that that's helping people to, to get very clear and very comfortable on their future instead of just wondering if they're going to be destitute at some point. So unpack that last piece a little bit. You mentioned that. So, and I'm, I'm now talking to folks out there who there are a lot of them who listen to the show who have some kind of either a solo 401k, if they're a business owner or a some sort of self-directed Roth IRA. Uh, did I hear you right that some recent legislation I'm not aware of has has actually made those not legal anymore? Yeah. So the, a lot of people have, over the years, and I mean, I even had one of these at one point. It was a um, a self-directed IRA. It was a mm. it was a Roth IRA, and and I had a checkbook. And the McNulty case made that illegal. The judge said, no, this is not. You, you have to have a custodian being in the middle of this stuff. And so a lot of people just either ignored it or their custodians didn't want to lose all their fees. So they just pretended it didn't really matter. Well, that mm. court to the people that had this thing, they were running it with their checkbook. They, they, the court fined them hundreds of thousands of dollars and it made a very direct point that you can't have this. They, and it's very different when you have an EQRP, when you have a 401k, you get to be the trustee. So you actually can have checkbook control, but 401ks and IRAs are, they're, they're built under different sections of the tax code. So you, if you want control, if you want actual control without somebody telling you what you what to do, you cannot use an IRA the way that you know, a lot of people were using it in the past. I mean, you have to have some other party involved, or you're you're just running the risk. And to me, it doesn't make any sense to run the risk when there's an alternative. Why would you do that? You can simply transfer into an EQRP, have the ability to run your assets either tax deferred or tax free, like with the Roth, and and you have that ability without the the potential of having the court or the IRS disqualify your, all your money and, and charge you interest and fees and fines and all that stuff. So it's, it, it used to be that, that you had a lot of options, but 
I mean, the government changes things and whether it's the courts or, or the Congress, it doesn't make any difference because they have the same impact. They have the same force. And if a court rules something, you've got to follow it. Just like if, if Congress rules or makes up new rules with their, their legislation. So the court has had that same impact on everybody. And, uh, and to ignore it, you, you run it at your own demise. Like that's, it's not a good idea. And again, there's, there's a solution. It's fairly straightforward. You just convert it. Yeah, that makes total sense. Thanks for shedding light on that. And so kind of progressing along in our journey here, you know, we've established that, okay, a lot of us may have this money in traditional accounts and here's how we can get it to a legal <laughs> account where we can actually, you know, have some sort of checkbook control. But as you also mentioned, you know, it's, you can't just put it in there and hope it's going to grow. This is where, okay, now you have control. You have to take control, grab life by the horns and, and steward your wealth and growth of your wealth. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, and this is something I've not heard of in the industry. So I'm really excited to get into this. Let's talk about the communities that you've set up where not only can these individuals interact with one another, but also I, I believe you said something about a marketplace where you can even go in and like see I don't know, pre-vetted type of, of uh, opportunities that are out there that, that are just a subset of what you could invest in. Examples, right? Tell me about all this stuff. Yeah. So one of the things that, that's been missing is people, they get control of their money and then they're like literally out in the wild. Well, no. They're looking on Google, <laughs> they're going to a seminar, they're just hoping they bump into something and it works. And and what what we've what I've found over the years is is we're smarter together. And so when you're around other people, you can, you can learn from them. You get to, you get to understand what they're doing. You have your questions that come up. Other people have questions you hadn't thought about, but you realize you need to ask that same question. And so ultimately we brought people together and created this incredible community with, with several thousand people that are part of it. And, and one of the things that people wanted to do is they wanted to be able to share their deals, the stuff that they're doing. And so we, we allow that to happen now. So people are able to share the deals. We're not saying this is a good deal or a bad deal, but we, what we've done is we've, we've created an environment where on one piece of paper, the entire deal, everything that you need to know about the deal is on that piece of paper. And, and so it allows you to, like a lot of deals, man, you've seen this, uh, they're, they're just overly complicated. Not, not as complicated as a prospectus from Wall Street. Those are ridiculous because they're all legal, but it's, it gets overwhelming. And so one of the things that's really helpful is to have people being able to see a deal and compare it to another deal and, and all the pertinent information, you know, who's involved, where are the risk factors, what, what's the exit strategy, how much capital is in the deal from the sponsors. Like there's all these things that we should know about. What's the, what's the timeline for cash coming in versus cash going out. And, you know, in the beginning or even in the middle of your investing journey, you don't know what you don't know. That's the big, it's not, it's not what you know that you're wrong about. It's what you, what you know, that's just ain't so. I think that was Mark Twain again. And, <laughs> and so it's, it's funny. People don't think about this stuff. They go, this is a really pretty deck. You know, like I, I, this deal looks really nice or I like the person that's pitching it. And, and what, what we've done is we've built something that gives you a, a at least a potential chance at making better decisions because you're actually seeing everything that you should see. And if that deal if a deal comes across and it has missing pieces, then you know, hey, there's a problem here. I need to get these pieces fixed or, or maybe pass on this deal. So it's been, it's been a useful tool for people to start thinking about deals and, and being more rational versus just being more emotional. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and folks, just as someone, so I, I personally don't have money in the retirement system anymore. The CARES Act helped me get, get the rest of that out that I had in there. So that's a whole different story for another day. But I've had a lot of experience going from being, we'll say, a professionally managed client, right? Even as small as I was at the time to, okay, no one's calling the shots but me. Now, how do I make sure I'm putting it in the right spot? And, you know, you, you've heard me talk about this and I'm sure Damien can attest. It's always you know, it's always sponsor or deal leader first, then it is down to the market or industry that it's in, and then it's down to the deal itself. And so if you follow that framework, look, you're not going to know everything. You're going to have to research things. And it helps a lot to have a community like this where you could, I'm sure, you know, you could go in there and say, okay, I want to look at uh, real estate or oil and gas or whatever different thing you know, search it in there and there's probably somebody talking about it and you can start to garner the things that, oh, wow, I never would have thought of that being a thing, you know, and, and you start to, you start to, to minimize the buckets of things that are in the unknown unknowns or known unknowns and you start to move them to known knowns. And that's how you start to de-risk your investment and, and really start to figure out who you are as an investor and what you like. For example, 
I love real estate. I've been doing real estate for a long time. I'm a third generation investor. I didn't know it till I was 25. That's another story. But the I do not invest in oil and gas, not because you can't make money in oil and gas, just because A, I've had first, uh, secondhand experience seeing it's not asymmetric. It's pretty symmetric risk profiles. The ups are as big of, as the downs. And uh, I just do not understand the industry well enough. Well, if, if, if you resonate and like, well, gee, I am an oil and gas professional. I work in the oil fields and I know what's going on in South Texas right now. I bet you, you could go and put your money in things that you see growing and have firsthand knowledge about. Imagine being able to grow your, your tax deferred wealth in that way. You know what I'm saying? What do you think, Damien? I, I I think that that's one of the smartest things that I've I've heard in a long time, and it and unfortunately people tend to invest based on what's exciting, yeah. and and if you if that's where you start, you're probably going to have an event called a seminar where your money's going to go away, and you're going to learn. Oh, that's probably something I don't want to do. I've I've seen it it's interesting. You bring up gas and oil or oil and gas. There, there's a ton of money that's made in that, and there's a ton of money that's lost. And most right. people that invest in that have no business going into it because they don't have any idea in reality what the risk is. People think, oh, well, I like this guy. All right, cool. If you like somebody and you're investing and that's how you're doing it, that's great. But I've seen people put all of their money into something where like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an asymmetric type of return. I'm like, yeah, or if you go to zero. And so there's just, I think there's more of a practical, this is where you need people that have been around, around mm -hmm. and done the thing for a long time. And they can say, okay, well, let's, let's look at this practically. Like one of the things that I love when I hear people doing it is they say, okay, I'm interested in this thing. I'm going to go fly out, get a buck my butt on a plane and I'm going to go meet the thing, meet the people, see the stuff. And it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. I mean, I've had, I've had some friends that, I mean, not all deals go good. Uh, you can go out to deals. Sometimes you go out and, and people will show you something that's not even theirs. Like I, I have a friend that did a, a cannabis investment thing. He went out and the person that was promoting it, it was, it wasn't even their plant. It wasn't even Holy their, smokes. like their facility and they pitched it. And a lot of people put a lot of millions of dollars in there. And it was like, I mean, this has happened multiple times. I've seen this happen at least three different times in the last 15 years. It's like nobody has heard the lesson, so they keep recreating it. And and so, but what you said, I think is critically important. You invest in the people first. And and I mean, because the reality is you can you can take chicken shit and turn it into chicken salad with the right chef. But, you know, if, if you think that you, you've got something that's just beautiful and you have the wrong team, they're going to turn it into crap. Like, and it's like, just, that's long. what happens. Or they're going <laughs> to steal it. Like it's, it happens all the time. So you're investing. When people invest in the stuff that we've done over the last however many years, been doing this for 25 years, they're investing in me. They're investing in the relationship. They're investing in the, the trust. I mean, why, why did people hand us over $50 million on FrameTech in the last two years? Because they, they believe in our ability to execute. And they also love the deal, but it's like they started off saying, you, you guys, and, and we're not perfect. I mean, in 2008, everybody lost their money. All me, my investor, like everybody got wiped out. So it, that's one of the major red flags from my perspective. Anybody that says I have a perfect track record either is brand new or they're lying. And and the reality is stuff happens. And and being able to acknowledge it and then say, here's what I learned from it. Here's how I do things differently. And and I also like that when people have gone through stuff and you know, just thinking about my my history, I love that they tend to be way more careful after they've gone through something, like I am incredibly nervous with people's money, meaning I protect it, I protect it way more than my money. And and I'm just I'm hyper conservative and I'll I'll just I won't I won't do anything stupid or, or crazy. And 25 years ago, that wasn't the same case. I was a lot more reckless. I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what it felt like to have to call somebody and say, I'm really, really sorry I lost your money. That is a horrible conversation. It sucks. It sucks really bad. And so Having people that have gone through things, it doesn't mean you can't invest with people that are, are new, but just understand it's just a different thing. And it's nice to have conversations with somebody where you can say, well, tell me about the things that have gone wrong. And then they can actually share some of their experiences. And you're like, oh, that's good. You've actually been through, through some stuff. This is not your first rodeo. Yeah. And more importantly, what they did. I mean, you know, have to, I mean, look, any business plan you invest in folks, especially if you start investing through an EQRP where you're, you're choosing what you're going into. You're investing in what I'll call a map. Someone is someone has laid out a map of this part of the country and they've drawn a route and they've said, this is how we're going to get to from point A to point B. And guess what? They're going to get in the car and they're going to start driving and they're going to hit some road closures. And they, there might be a flood in this town. They got to go all the way around here. 
or they might get in a car wreck and the whole damn thing blows up. I mean, it, like some stuff happens. And so you're trusting the person driving that car to adjust the route and keep as on course as possible in the unknown unknowns that lie on the actual ground that is that map, right? And so if you think about your investing in that way, I think it'll 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 take you a long way because it, it'll it'll remind you that you know no one ever has put on a pro forma we're going to have a massive crash three years from now and it's going to lose all your money. No one ever puts that on a pro forma. All right, it just doesn't work. So you know the pro forma is a map. It's a it's a it's a it's a plan, but ne- not everything goes according to plan. You know. And in fact, nothing does. I mean, there's yeah. we with, even my with wins our, have not gone according to plan. By no, the way. <laughs> I mean, that's, it, it, it's funny because people go, well, they, they ask all the time because we when you, it, like the project that we're working on is is, is massive. I mean, these yeah. these manufacturing plants are so big that there's a ginormous amount of money, and people go, is this you know two years later? Is are we still on track with the pro forma? And I, and I go, well, here's the seventy four different things that have changed the course, and <laughs> it's it's better, but it's different. And it, yeah. it grew in scale and scope and, 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 and they go, oh, okay. And so we, we talk about those things and what, what people, a big part of what people are investing in is the execution, the, the decisions day to day, all those things that come up. You can, I, I, it's funny. You can put anything on a pro forma. I mean, pro forma yeah. is like, you can literally make it sing and dance and do all sorts of fun tricks. And, and it's, it's funny too, because you look at a prospectus. And and the, the private placement docs for for deals, and they they give you the four thousand different ways you're going to lose all your money. So you have like pie in the sky, hopeful, and then you have all the ways you're going to lose your money. So then you're like, well, I don't know what to believe. Well, you have to decide who you're investing with because that's what you need to believe them. If right. you believe them, right. then they're going to do the right thing. It doesn't mean it's always going to work, but ultimately that's what it's coming down to because they're the ones that are making their decision those decisions. And I, I mean, I've learned this in spades, really deeply over the last half decade when I, I started playing with with some other you know some other operators and and really understanding that if I have any red flags about the people I'm I'm potentially going to bring in money with two millions of dollars then it's it's a it's a hard stop it, there's yeah. because yeah. those those red flags will turn into ginormous losses when you're when your spidey senses perk up and, Trust and sometimes <laughs> I mean, you know look sometimes when you're new your spidey senses get triggered by the wind changing you're like, oh God, I'm going to lose my money. Well, and sometimes that's just being new and nervous. But the the reality is, we do have these instincts. And if if you're getting a bad feeling about something, basically somebody, that my suggestion is always take a pass, take a pause. Like there's just no reason. Don't feel pressured. Just like chill out and and then try to ask, try to figure out why why you were thinking that. Usually you'll be you'll be proven right uh, with enough time. It's just what I've seen over the last two and a half decades. That your your instincts are generally not wrong. It's usually not. And, uh, you know, I want to go to the next section of this episode, but one more thing on this is, you know, it's usually not wrong. And if the person you're talking to is any good, they're probably creating some kind of urgency on the project of how this is the only thing like this that's going to create this return. Promise there's always another deal. There's probably five like it always. Right. And so if you don't feel right, just don't do it. There'll be another one tomorrow. I promise you. I've never, I, I, I've never run out of deals to look at. Okay. <laughs> Um, and so, okay, let, let's real quick, Damien, before I want to get to talk about frame tech, cause this is a great example of what's possible, you know, when you have control of your, of your money and you can choose to invest in, in privately held companies, by the way, the majority of big wealth is not made on wall street. It is made in privately held companies. There's a reason for that. That's why we're a capitalistic society. We'll get to that in a minute, but just so the, the audience can kind of bridge the gap of like, okay, now we've gone from our current accounts to this EQRP. We know why the others are not legal. We've talked about now being stewards of our own money, but what are kind of the the the, the prohibited transactions? Like, what, it's, it's easier to say what you can't do than what you can do. But what what is the what are the the couple things you can't do with this? And then we'll go talk about an example of what you can do. Yeah, so it's, it's it's actually interesting because the IRS specifically in the code says here's what you can't do, and then they leave it up to you really to do yeah. whatever else you want. So what you can't do is really invest in things where you're getting a personal benefit. So like you, if you're a real estate agent, you can't go do a deal with your retirement account and then get a commission. So you're you're basically enriching yourself. That's usually the one that people trip up on. Every once in a while, somebody wants to go flip a car, but you can't do cars or collectibles. You can't invest in stuff like that. So it's 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 really funny because it's very rare that people get really wound up outside of trying to use the thing to make money today or wanting to buy a lake house and then going and using it 
meaning buying a lake house with your retirement account, you can't get current benefit. That's that's usually the stuff that that trips people up. Besides that, every once in a while, it's the cars, it's it's art, it's wine. People want to go invest in wine. I'm like, well, yeah, you can just go buy a wine shop. So don't buy the wine, just buy the whole store. You know, you can do that. There are ways to do this. And this is part of what, what we do, what the team does, the EQRP. They go, okay, well, you can't do this. Here's another option. And so they're constantly helping navigate through these things and not just saying no, no, no. Like a lot of places you go to an FAQ and, and it just says no, and you're like, oh, and then you get stuck. But when you have humans involved, and, and, and I would say they're still better than ChatGPT, even though it's version four as of yesterday, I, I think that there's there's this incredible value of having people being able to think through that stuff and I, we, we've rarely run into somebody that that was not able to do something that made progress going forward. It's, you know, sometimes people get a little fixated on, it has to be this way. It's like you mentioned a deal that it's either now or never. And it's like, look, you, there, there's other options. And um, you, sometimes you just have to have a little patience. And, and that's, you know, it's hard because everything is, it's instant right now. It's an instant click and, yeah. and everything is, you know, immediate. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And and I think so with with this particular one it's probably the same but you can invest in basically something that that you are personally involved in or it was it blood family like like direct birth line or something. You you can't yeah, invest so you, in your so, son or your mother or something like that. Exactly, up and down in your family tree. Yeah. But side, side to side is okay. <laughs> Cousin, brothers, sisters like they're they're all fine. For whatever reason in their infinite wisdom the IRS has said no, you can't invest with your mom or dad because that's I don't know how that's different than your brothers or sisters but that is that those are the rules at the moment you know congress likes to change things because they just like to change things so you never know when that's going to change but right now now that's that's probably one of the ones that comes up regularly yeah. people want to do a deal with their their kids or their parents and, and you can't with your retirement account i wonder i wonder if it has to do with passing wealth on if they're worried that oh they'll do this with their parents and then it'll come right back to them i don't know anyway i'm, I'm foreshadowing <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let's get on to how we can use this thing. So we've mentioned Frame Tech a couple of times throughout this episode. I learned about Frame Tech yesterday on a call with Damien's associate. It's a super cool company. As a as a re recovering engineer, I was nerding out to it. So tell me about this and and kind of position it as an example of what someone might choose to invest in. And uh, you know, it's, man, give us a lowdown. I'm excited for this part. So it's really funny because if you, if you nerd out with the idea of it, wait till you go to the plant and you walk into a, a two and a half or a, almost a three acre facility that came out of the desert. So this is truly the Phoenix. It was, it, it, this was an idea on a napkin a couple of years ago, uh, three years ago when, when David and I found out about it, we were told about it. And, and it's, it, it was this really interesting idea because the construction industry, one has a huge problem. They can't produce enough housing for people in America. And, and, Two, it doesn't innovate. And so like the last innovation in construction was the nail gun, like 50 years ago. I mean, like big, big picture. There's always little people, you know, people doing things, uh, innovations or trying 3D printing and stuff like that. But there really hadn't been innovation in this, you know, in, in getting trusses and f houses built. And and so there's this huge problem. And we, we were like, yeah, we there is a problem. Well, these guys had this idea that had been in the industry of building trusses and walls for 50 years. And so they knew a thing or, th or two and we didn't. We knew that we, I mean, we built houses and things, but these guys really understood the industry. And so when they came in and they shared this with us, first off, we looked at their thing and said, there's no way this is, this can't be real. And then we got a little curious about it and we flew out to Arizona and we were, we met with them and here, here's where, what we talked about earlier comes into play. We looked at them and after an hour and a half at lunch, we said, all right, you guys need $40 million to build this. We'll give you the 40 million bucks. And we did that because we had a community that we knew would get would be excited. We knew that we had a relationship with them. And, and so they said, awesome, wonderful. They walked away and they said, these guys are full of crap. There's no way after lunch, they're going to give us $40 million. We started giving, I mean, money started going to them within a couple of weeks, millions of dollars. And they went, oh damn, this is actually happening. So that was two years ago. And a year ago, we, we really like just the spring of 2023, we broke ground and really started doing the thing. And we're we're going to be online this summer. And what this is, Frame Tech is this. It's a disruptive, vertically integrated manufacturing facility that does all the framing. So your floors, your walls, your trusses, all the wood, all the bones of a house or an apartment are. We take a plan for a house or an apartment, and we we convert it into our system, meaning our CAD, and then we push it into our almost fully automated entire construction system here in Arizona. And we spit out all the pieces and then we put them on one of our trucks and our team goes out and, and goes out and puts the house together. 
And so in a period of about two weeks or less, you have, you go from design to a framed house in an apartment that normally takes 10 months, we do it in two. So the first big disruptor is we've cut down construction time for the framing process by about 80%. So that's oh. not a little change. That's like exponential. And, and then the, another thing that's massive so is hold, if you've hold ever on. seen- you, you, You're saying weeks from weeks of framing to days? Yeah, it's it, it literally- it, it, That's it's, a big the, number. The process is so fast because it's it, because of this, and it's actually a patented process of, of, yeah. of everything that we're doing in the plant. So like 80% less time. That's, that's huge. Okay, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> people, people go, wait, if you could just tell us you, you would do this in two months, that would be great. We could count on it. But you're saying two weeks and the answer is yes, consistently. That's how it, that's how it works. The other thing that you notice, if you ever go to a site, a house is being built or an apartment's being built, you'll see dumpsters full of trees. You'll just see all this waste. And, and our process uses this, it's a finger joining process with all our boards. And this process is again, it's patented. And, and what that means is that when we build, we, we use wood in a different way. And instead of having three 40 yard dumpsters full of trees at a house, that's the average for a 2000 square foot house. We have like a 35, 40 gallon um, trash can full of sawdust that is basically our only waste for this process. So it's 95 to 98% less waste. So we're not, we're not throwing away trees. And you start thinking about what that means. Not only is that going to be way less expensive to not have that waste, we're having a less impact on the environment, like all the, all the diesel to run all this crap around, like all these things. And so this is why this, why something like this is so such a disruptive thing and why it's so exciting and, and why people said, well, this is really cool. And then can it make money? Well, yeah, not only is it cool because everybody wins, but then when you build something for $40, $50 million, what is it worth? That's the difference between building manufacturing and maybe building something like, or, or like buying a house and then flipping it. When you're building something that builds something, you're building the origin, it has the, the asymmetric opportunity to be 10X, 20X, 50X. We just got a valuation that it's right under half a billion dollars two years later for, for the frame tech. And that was a napkin two years ago. And, and so what, what people are realizing is you can invest in something with retirement money, which you can turn into tax-free and you can find a deal that makes a lot of sense and all the stakeholders actually win. And so people are like, well, this is, we, we like this and they get to touch it and they get to meet and shake hands with the people that are running it and they get to listen to them. So what I've, what I've learned about frame tech as we've gone along is that any type of investment that frame tech is the bar, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because it has all these things. And so it, you don't need to invest in frame tech. Maybe some people want to, but the reality is you can learn what your deal should have if you compare it to frame tech. And there's, like you said, there's tons of great deals out there, but you need to have a bar. And so I love saying, all right, frame tech is a great thing to learn about and then compare other things and say, okay, well, I want to know about the leadership experience. I want to know about the people that are boots on. Is everybody in the sponsor team, are they actually in a different state or do you have anybody here in the middle of your deal? Like these are all these interesting questions. How much money is in the deal from the actual sponsors? Like, and it doesn't, there's no perfect answer, but having all those questions and then seeing how frame tech was built, this is why people said, yes, they put their hands up and, and it got funded and why we're doing a second plant and why we see this rolling across the country. Why we, there's like all these pieces are in, in place and all those pieces should be in place for any deal you invest in. But the question is, what are the pieces and what are the questions? And, and I think that that's really helpful to find something where all, I believe all those questions are answered. Yeah, that's a great point, Damien. I mean, even if it's not frame tech, if you look at the the infrastructure of that offering, like if you just, just go look at that. I bet whether you're wanting to invest in an oil and gas business or a real estate offering or this or that, you're going to find some common denominators in how well something like that is run and who's behind it and what, you know, what's in place. So, you know, just, just success leaves clues. Use that as a template and and check it out. And so, you know, Damien, I, I know I want to respect your time. I know we're coming close to the end of the episode here. Uh, real quickly, before we get into these last few questions, uh, share the URL for that because they have a really entertaining, uh, uh, what do you call it, instructor video that I watched the other yeah. day on their website that is just, you got you guys have to go watch it. It's amazing. But it, what, you what's need to watch tech? Marvin, our, our, our inventor yeah. patriarch, who That's is it. this, this he's like, he's kind of like, the uh the lebron james or the kobe bryant of of manufacturing like it's, it's wild <laughs> and it's, it's a little cartoon version it's like a, a three or four or five minute thing where it explains what frame tech is 
and what we're doing. And it's like, it's, it's a draw shop board. Um, Summer uh, is the one runs draw shop and created this really cool thing with her team. So if, if nothing else, it's a little entertaining for five minute deal. Uh, frame tech tec.com is just go check it out and, and poke around. And ch- truly, I, I say this genuinely, if you are curious and you're like, I really want to know more about this, come out to Arizona. And I mean, it's a beautiful place anyway. And like, come, come visit the plant. Like it's an open invitation to the world to come see what, what it looks like. Go. I mean, I think one of the things that I love about this is it shows that we can actually build things that we can do good. And, and it's not all like the whole world isn't just falling apart. There's actually some amazing things that are happening. We are building America. We're hiring people. Like, I love seeing that kind of stuff. And I think we just get buried in all the negativity and divisiveness. So I, I would genuinely, genuinely love to have people reach out and come check this out or, or even call and say, hey, I want to talk about this. I want to learn more. It's, it's a great educational piece. It's sort of like an MBA without having to spend $400,000 at Harvard. Super cool, Damien. Super cool venture. So, all right, man, last couple of questions, and then we'll let you get back to all the things you need to do this afternoon. So first one, Damien, what is your superpower, life or business? And, you know, how does it serve you well? I So I have this strange ability to envision and see way into the future and grind like like a honey badger. And and I use honey badger. That's our, our avatar for our, our team, for the organization. It's very unusual to have people, usually people that are in the clouds can never get down to the ground. And the people that are on the ground tend to just dig and they don't actually go up and look at the 30,000 foot view. So the superpower is being able to live in both worlds simultaneous and having the ability to see two opposing sides of something and actually think through those at the same time, which is very strange, but it's, I think it's critical to be able to think that way and operate in both in the sky and on the ground at the same time. Yeah, man. Being able to go from 10,000 feet to 10 and back up again, that, that is a superpower. <laughs> Many can't do it. Yeah. So let's flip the coin over. Um, big, biggest mistake, life or business, what'd you learn from it most importantly? Uh, one of the biggest things that I, recent, probably mm, seven years ago, six, seven years ago, was, was thinking that people were the enemy. And, and the reason I say that is I, I've had experiences where I've been screwed by people and you know, they've stolen from me. and having this mindset that people are bad may, basically means that there's no ability to create, there's no leverage with other people's talents and their skills. And it's really just not that much fun doing everything by yourself. And so the, one of the biggest mistakes was having that mindset, having that belief system. Finally, somehow I got knocked loose. And now I have these incredible people that are my favorite people to hang out with. And, and like the hundreds and hundreds of, of investors that I get to have an impact on their lives. None of that would have happened if I maintained that, that really dumb perspective that people were bad because i think people are amazing i think that there's some bad apples and when they happen you just you know you, you kick them to the curb but there's just so many cool people and so I'm, I'm i'm grateful that that belief got knocked around and knocked out yeah i th- that one's incredible <laughs> because it, it truly if you're going to build anything whether it be your own wealth or a company or whatever it, it, it takes a community you don't want to be the only one behind the desk you know and uh yeah amazing insight there last one damien and this one's pretty hard all right what is the best way to get in touch with you after the episode <laughs> uh you know truly uh, I, I would love it for people to come out here but if you don't want if you, if you don't want to or can't come out I uh, come, come visit the site, come, come visit frame tech and, and you'll, you'll find me on there and you'll find me on LinkedIn and, and, you know, reach out in whatever way that is easy for you. I mean, you're going to find me on every social thing that's out there. Uh, and, and that's, and I actually answer things. I, I think it's really interesting when people reach out and here, here's one of the things, a little suggestion, a little, little hack. Don't be boring. When, when you reach out to somebody, like I'm genuinely offering to, to engage with people. Don't come out and, and your first thing is, hey, I, I want to pitch you on something. You know, come out and be, be curious. Being curious to people, I think, is really, really interesting to the people you're curious to. And, and I, love, I love helping people. I love supporting people. My mission is to break a million people's financial sh- shackles and free them from bondage. So if, if I can help that in one way and help that one starfish get back into the water, that's, that makes my day. And, and so reach out to me and, and whatever. I mean. I usually have an idea that I can come up with pretty quickly if you have a genuinely curious question and I'm happy to do it. So please do reach out. Yeah, folks. And I do believe he is genuine on that. I've known of this guy. I've heard about his name for a long time. True authority in the retirement account space. Folks, 
everything about Damien will be in the show notes, you know, his website, contact information, stuff like that. So reach out, you know, his team is amazing. I know one of our team members who still has some money in the retirement space is actually grabbing onto one of these accounts as we speak. Um, and I hope we will see all, a lot of you in the Badger community. I believe we are going to be in there engaging as well here before too long. So super excited about it. And uh, Damien, thank you for coming on, sharing your wisdom, your experience, and some of the cool stuff you're working on today. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right, everyone. This has been another episode of the Real Estate Runway Podcast. Until next time, over and out. We hope this episode was insightful and brought value to your day. If so, please be awesome and leave us a five-star review. Find out how Team Quattro can help you at thequattroway.com and scroll down for more info. Until next time, this is the Real Estate Runway Podcast.